Hello. Hi, everyone. How are you guys? So today, we are going to work on section 7.2. This section is about sum and difference identity identities. So in this section, we are going to learn how to find, for example, sine of 30 plus 45 equal. OK? So for now, until now, we only studied sine of 30, sine of 45. But of course, there are some instances, there may be some instances we may need to find what is, for example, sine of 30 plus 45. And in general, what is sine of A plus B? What is cosine of A plus B or A minus B? So in this section, we are going to learn these identities. This is uh, section 7.2. OK. So first of all, what are those identities? Let me just quickly mention them. This, this is all, at the beginning, we are going to work only for sine and cosine. For cosine, cosine of a plus b, as you see here, cosine of a plus b is equal to cosine of a times cosine of b minus sine a sine b. If there's plus inside cosine parentheses, there is minus here, okay? That's how I remember from my uh, college years. And cosine of a minus b, if there's minus here, it is cosine a cosine b plus sine a sine b, okay? And if you realize that for cosine, we just at the beginning only work with cosine and cosine. And in second part, we work with sine and sine, right? Sine of a and sine b and b. Okay, when it comes to sum and difference formula for sine, uh, sine of a plus b is equal to sine of a cosine b plus cosine a sine b. And if you realize that if there is a summation inside the parentheses of sine, there's also summation in the formula, right? This is the case for sine. And in the sine case, we just switch sine and cosine. And for the difference formula, sine of a minus b is equal to sine of a cosine b minus cosine of a sine b. Again, if there's a minus here, there is minus here. We are switching sine and cosine. And uh, this, we start with sine of a as you see here in the formula. And it, uh, because A is coming first, right? That's why we said with sine of A cosine B minus cosine of A sine B. Okay, you need to learn, somehow memorize this formula. These are really quite important formulas. Okay, use a sum or, let's look at the examples. Use a sum or difference identity for cosine to evaluate cosine of 105 degrees exactly. Okay, so first of all, what is 105 degrees equal to 105 is equal to? Let's try to write 105 as a sum of two well-known degrees, okay? And what are they? It is 45 and 60, right? And we know what sine 45, what cosine 45, sine 60, cosine 60, right? That's why we can use this these known, known uh, angles, these are the uh, famous angles, right? These are the angles in, this, in our two spatial triangles. So we can use this sum to find what cosine of 105 is, okay? So let's apply the formula, cosine of uh, 105 is equal to cosine of 45 plus 60. Right, and now uh, we are gonna use the first formula, right? Cosine of a plus b is cosine a cosine b minus sine a sine b. So that's equal to cosine 45 times cosine 60 minus, and not including degrees here, but it's clear from the context that they are degrees, right? Cosine 45 times cosine 60 minus sine 45 times sine 60. Okay, what is cosine 45? What is cosine 60, right? So let me remind you those spatial triangles. You should always remember these triangles. 45, 45, 90. This is one, one root two, right? And similarly, 
60, 30, 90, 1, 2, root 3. Okay, so what is this equal to then? Cosine 45 is 1 over root 2, right? 1 over root 2 times cosine 60. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, right? So cosine 60 is 1 over root, 1 over 2. 1 over 2 minus sine 45 is again 1 over root 2 times sine 60 is a sine is opposite over opposite over hypotenuse right so root 3 over 2 so what does it make so let's multiply these fractions so on the left we have 1 over 2 root 2 and on the right we have minus root 3 over 2 root 2 right so what do we get at the end? 1 minus root 3 over 2 root 2. Yes, this is the final answer, right? Cosine of 105 is 1 minus root 2 p over 2 root 2. And this is a negative number, right? Because 1 minus root 3 is negative. And it makes sense because 105 is in the second quadrant and the cosine is negative in the second quadrant. All right? I hope it's clear for everyone. Let's continue the next example. Sine of x plus 30. So if you write sine of x plus 30 in terms of sine x cosine x using the sum and difference identities. Okay, we need to use the uh, sine of a plus b formula, right? So sine of x plus 30 is equal to sine x times cosine 30. And remember, if there is plus inside parentheses, this is also plus if it is sine. And then you just need to ch change the angle. So you should start always with sine and the first angle x. And then uh, what is next? Sine 30 times cosine x. Sine x is sine x. We don't know what x is, right? So we should keep it as is. And cosine 30 is, if you go back, cosine 30, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, right? Root three over two. And sine 30, which I will need in the next term, one over two, right? So sine x times uh, root three over two plus sine 30 is one half, right? One half times cosine x. And if I multiply the fractions, I get root three sine x over two. And actually they have the same uh, denominator, right? So I can combine them plus cosine x. So root three is sine x plus cosine x over two. Okay, again, I'm just using the formula here, like this formula, all right? Let's go to the next example. This time we have difference formula, right? Sine of x minus seven pi over six. Okay. All right, so sine of x minus seven pi over six is equal to, again, this is the difference formula, right? I have to use this difference formula. And again, I am starting with sine and the first angle, right? Inside the parentheses, x. And I have to switch between sine and cosine for the sine, for the formula of sine, right? So sine x times cosine seven pi over six. And if it is minus inside, inside sine, this is also minus here, minus. Now I have to switch the angles. Sine of seven pi over six times cosine x, okay? Now we should find what is cosine of seven pi over six and sine of seven pi over six, right? Okay, let's try to remember where is seven pi over six. Seven pi over six is here, right? And this angle is, the whole angle is pi, so this angle is pi over six. 
But if you convert to the degrees, it is 30, right? Now we have our spatial triangle. This is good news. This is 60 and this is 90. Of course, this is negative x-axis. Be careful with negative. This is negative y-axis, right? That's why the, uh, the side here will be ne all negative one. Hypotenuse is always positive, as you remember. And normally the, the side across to 60 is root three, but since this is negative x, x, it should be negative root three, okay? All right, so with keeping in that mind, sine x times cosine of seven pi over six. So cosine here is, uh, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, right? Negative root three over two minus sine seven pi over six. So again, I have to look at this angle, right? So it's opposite over hypotenuse, negative one half over cosine x times cosine x, sorry. So that's equal to negative root three sine x over two. Negative, negative will be positive, right? Positive cosine x over two, and they have the common denominator. So negative root three sine x plus cosine x over two. All right. Okay. So in this video, let me stop here. In the next video, I will continue to working on examples using sine and cosine formula. And I will be also giving the formula for tangent and cotangent, okay? Some and difference formula for tangent and cotangent. All right, see you in the next video.